Good morning and welcome to the last little bit of new content that we have to do before the exam. So what we're looking at is linear, linear inequalities. And that isn't, this, this, this is an example of one. Graph of X is less than one. So, using our ruler, we decide where x is 1. And then we are going to put a dotted line all the way up and down. where x equals uh, x is 1 because remember the less than symbol means that you can go infinitely close to 1 but not actually be 1 and the easiest way for us to represent that on a graph is with a dotted line at the value that it states so this line here the dotted line is on x equals 1 but it's dotted to communicate that we go infinitely close to it, but not actually touch x equals one. So this, this here, that point there is x equals one. Now, when we graph these, what we have to do is we have to then shade everything beyond it in the correct direction. So in this case here, X is less than one. So what values of X are less than one? Well, X is 0 0.5 and zero and negative 0.5, negative one, negative two, negative three. So we would shade this entire section in. You guys have to do it until you can make a point. Which side of the graph is being shaded? Now, if it was the other way around, and it was x is greater than one, then I would be shading the other side instead. If it was x is greater than or equal to 1, then instead of a dotted line here, I would have a, what would I have instead? I'd have a solid line. Because a solid line means you are including that as well. The same thing works when we are talking about y values as well. So, Same thing, if I'm talking, if I'm gonna do Y values, in, but in, obviously instead of shading left or right, I'm shading up or down. So if I wanted to do, say for example, y is greater than negative two, I would find negative two on my axis. Again, it's a single, single line here, not a double line. Therefore, I don't have to put a solid line in, and now y is greater than minus two, means I'm going to be shading above or below the line. Well, it's numbers are larger than minus two, so it's going to be 
all these this entire space up here everything here all of a sudden gets shaded and of course if I was to do it the other way around and do for example y is less than minus 2 then that's everything below that line instead and of course if I change it and I start talking about y is is less than or equal to minus 2 then this line all of a sudden becomes solid obviously you would use a ruler where linear equalities can get interesting is when you start to have other things going on so for example what happens if I had an equation that had an x and a y in it So, if I, so I started by having an X and a Y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw another set of axes. x plus 2y is less than 4. All right, so we've got x and y on the same side as on the same side opposing an inequality. Now that we can draw the graphs of these. All right, it's very it's actually quite easy to do because you guys have already done it. What I want us to do is I want us to think about x plus 2y equals 4. When x equals 0, y is going to equal 2. And when y equals 0, x is going to equal 4. So I've got there two and four. So this is in intercept form. So I've got the intercepts for this line, specifically this line here. But the only difference between this one and this one up here is the less than symbol. Now, as I've been doing on all the other ones that you've seen before, if I'm using a less than and not equal to sign, I can draw the line with a dotted line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in here, line my ruler up with these with these points here. And I'm going to draw my line in, but of course, because it's a less than symbol, I'm going to draw in a dotted line. And because it is an inequality, I need to start shade. I need to shade everything. So, how do I know? what side of my line to shade, left side or right side, or top or bottom, whichever way is easier for you to think about it. And it turns out the easiest way to do it is with what is called an origin test. And the origin is obviously zero, zero. And what we do is we take this X value and this y value, and we put it into our inequality. 
All right, we put it into our inequality, and then we see what happens. Zero plus two times zero is less than four. Is zero less than four? If that is true, then we shade the side of things that include zero, zero, because remember, there is zero, zero. So in our inequality, if zero, zero is present, then we can shade any side of the map, any side of the line that has our friend zero, zero. If the line was the other way around, such as, what if it was x plus 2y is greater than 4? If I put the origin test into here, I would end up with a statement that 0 is greater than 4, which is flagrantly wrong. And in that case, I would shade the side of my line that doesn't include zero, zero. So when you have lines like this or linear inequalities like this, you need to, st you need to think about, well, what if zero so where is zero zero in all of this if the inequality is true then you shade the side that has that point now you can do tests with any point but the easiest one to do it for or do it with is the origin because it's just zeros i'll prove a point What about the point one comma four? If I put one comma four into here, one plus two times four is nine, is nine greater than four? Well, there's one four in here. So clearly I shade whichever side of my line includes that point. But if I was to put, if I was to put negative one, comma, negative two into this statement, it would be false, which means I would show whichever side doesn't have negative one, negative two in there. The best part is, is that your CAS can do this as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this away. And we're gonna bring up our CAS. Now, the only thing about the CAS is that it's a little fiddly, like a lot of things. I'll just get rid of my uh, math methods work there. Now the problem is, is that when we go into graph and table, everything is written in terms of y1 and then the equation, which means that the y and the x need to be on different sides for this to work properly. So what we do is we use our CAS to do the rearranging for us. So for example, if I did have the statement uh, x plus 2y is greater than 4, I would need to rearrange this into something that my CAS can handle. And the way I do that 
is by using solve. So I'm going to action, advanced solve. And what I want to do is I want to solve for Y. And what it does is it automatically rearranges it for me. Now, what you'll notice sometimes is that when you rearrange these, the inequality symbol might flip around. Now, there is a mathematical reason for that, but right now we don't need to worry about it. Mr. Kaz has got us handled. In this case here, everything's, everything's nice and hunky-dory. Now, what we do is we now, we now go here and we bring up split screen. I can now highlight my thing here and drag it down. Small problem. All right. One small problem. This is still equals. This is still an exact line. What I can now do is if I click or tap on the equals, it brings up all these different types of equations, including our inequalities. So in this case here, we need to look at the equation that was given to us before. In this case here, it is y is greater than all of that. Make sure they line up properly. And now, if I hit graph and I draw that graph, you can see that it's given me a dotted line and it has shaded the area above. All right, so it has shaded the area above for me. Here's where it gets a little annoying because sometimes you might be given multiple inequalities to layer on top of each other. And that's what we're going to be doing later today anyway. But some of those inequalities are X is greater than and equal to a certain number. And to do that is a little bit different. So we go down to Y2, we tap this, and all of a sudden we find the X inequalities are here as well. And I tap that, and what you'll notice is that all of these follow-up numbers have become X as well. Now the two dots hasn't changed yet because I haven't written anything in there. If I put zero in there, hey presto, it's changed for me. If I wanted to go back to doing Y equations, I would then have to go back up here, tap the down arrow and change back. And then everything would, everything would fix itself. Or I can go to Y equals. And coincidentally, if I draw this, I get, I get double shade. This can be a little hard to read sometimes. So luckily what our CASs can do is if we go press the cog, we go down to graph format and it says an inequality plot. We change that to intersection and all of a sudden now all it does is it just shows us the area that is relevant. It uncolors anything that doesn't meet all of my linear inequalities. So I could go in and I could, I could add even more inequalities just for this, just for a laugh. So I could go in and go, well, okay, what about, um, if I had this green one in,
what about if I put uh, an, an, what if I bet if I put an, another one in there and I go mm, y is less than uh, negative x plus 8 And what it does is it keeps narrowing down the shaded area for me. And the shaded area are the only values where any answer in here actually is approved by all of these different graphs. So I can take any coordinate from in here, test it in these linear inequalities, and everything comes up hunky-dory. And we will talk about the practical applications of those next class.